Holy Father in heaven, we praise your name for the goodness and mercy in our lives. We have come at this moment to fellowship with you, and we ask that, that the moments we will spend with you shall be a blessed one. Lord, we hunger and test for righteousness. Please fill our souls. We pray, Father, that you would fill us with your spirit, and may the words that we hear build us up into the most holy faith. I bring myself to you and ask, please, consecrate me now to your service, Lord, that the words that will be spoken shall bless your children who are listening. In Jesus' name I've prayed. Amen. Conflict and Courage, May 13 Like parent, like child My son, keep your father's commandment and forsake not your mother's teaching. Proverbs chapter 6 verse 20 What the parents are, that to a great extent the children will be. The physical conditions of the parents their dispositions and appetites, their mental and moral tendencies are to a greater or less degree reproduced in their children. The nobler the aims, the higher the mental and spiritual endowments, and the better develop the physical power of the parents, the better will be the life equipment they give their children. In cultivating that which is best in themselves, Parents are exerting an influence to mold society and to uplift future generations. Fathers and mothers need to understand their responsibility. The world is full of snares for the feet of the young. They cannot discern the hidden dangers of the fearful ending of the path that seems to them the way of happiness. Even before the birth of the child, the preparation should begin that will enable it to fight successfully the battle against evil. Especially does responsibility rest upon the mother. She by whose lifeblood the child is nourished and its physical frame built up, imparts to it also mental and spiritual influences that tend to the shaping of mind and character. It was Hannah, the woman of prayer and self-sacrifice, and heavenly inspiration, who gave birth to Samuel, the heaven-instructed child, the incorruptible judge, the founder of Israel's sacred schools. Would that every mother could realize how great are her duties and her responsibilities, and how great will be the reward of faithfulness. The mother's daily influence upon her children is preparing them for everlasting life or eternal death. She exercises in her home a power more decisive than the minister in the desk or even the king upon his throne. Amen. The title of our devotion for today is Like Parent, Like Child. Our key text is taken from the book of Proverbs chapter 6 verse 20 which says, My son, keep your father's commandment and forsake not your mother's teaching. The last few words that we heard just now from the reading is filled with a lot of meaning and if we can assimilate it and properly understand it, then we will not realize the real responsibility that is upon the woman in the home. It says, Would that every mother could realize how great are her duties and her responsibilities, and how great will be the reward of faithfulness. The mother's daily influence upon her children is bringing them, is preparing them for everlasting life or eternal death. She exercises in her home a power more decisive than the minister in the desk or even the king upon 
his throne. That is conflict and courage, page 139, paragraph 8. Those are powerful words there, which means that every mother should understand that we settle this matter very clearly. The work of training children is indeed a work for both parents, but the truth is that one has more influence on what mode the child will have than the other, and that is the mother. And that's why we say, like parent, like child. Both parents, like I said, have an influence on the child. But because the mother is the one whom the child is growing inside, she is the one nourishing the child with the first taste or with the, with the nutrients of food that the child gets before they are born. It is the mother's dispositions, like we've read, read uh, studied in previous devotions, her dispositions, it is her life blood that is going into that child. The food she's eating is already forming the taste for that child. The music she's listening to and the conversation she's hearing, like we saw in the case of John the Baptist, is affecting the child. Her own antibodies, her weaknesses, her strengths that she has developed over the years, it is that it's in her blood and it's going into that child. A lot is dependent on the mother and this responsibility shouldn't be looked at as something to shun but rather it should be looked at as a faithful honor given to the woman because like we saw the reward for training the child right is great the lord is going to bless the faithful mothers who are doing their job we, we, we today very many women look down on the job of child training they leave the work for others to do for them if only they could understand how important and how um, prestigious is this responsibility. It wouldn't be looked down on with the derogatory eyes. Some people want to, some ladies want to call themselves the working class ladies, and doesn't mean you can't be that. But do not neglect the work of bringing up your child and committing that to someone else to do for you. It is better you do it for yourself, for your child, and bring them up in the way of the Lord. But for a woman and a parent generally to bring up a child in the way of the Lord, they themselves need to know the way of the Lord. For the fact is that nobody is going to give to their child what they do not have. You only give what you have. And that's why we are saying, like parent, like child, you give what you have in your blood, you give what you have in your strengths, you give what you have in your weaknesses, you give what you have in your inclinations, in your tendencies, your likes and your dislikes, your preferences, your spiritual knowledge when the child is born, your own ideas, you commit it to your child. And you find out that many children they have this almost the same character as their parents. They have the same ideas because the, it was committed to them by, by their parents. And that's why whatever we see in a child, many times they take, it, they take after their parents. Unlike today, okay, sometimes it's not usually the case. A lot of influences are playing on the child. But a lot also is coming from the parent. A, a lot has already come to the child from, from the time they were in the womb of the mother. And there's much more that they give to the child by precept and example, not just by inheritance, but by precept and example. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs, chapter 13, verse 22, A good man leaveth an inheritance to his children's children, and the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. But I want to put another understanding to this. Yes, when we talk of inheritance, we may be talking of material things. But inheritance is also your genes, it's also your blood, it's also your tastes, it's also your dispositions. Proverbs 13 verse 22 again says, A good man leaveth an inheritance to his children's children. Now, what, what suge- what's the suggestion there? The good man will leave a good inheritance for the children. From what we read today in our devotion, in Conflict and Courage, page 139, paragraph 2, we are told the physical conditions of the parents, their dispositions and appetites, their mental and moral tendencies are, to a greater or less degree, reproduced in their children. The nobler the aims, the higher the mental and spiritual endowments, and the better develops the physical power of the parents, the better will be the life equipment they give their children. In cultivating that which is best in themselves, 
parents are exerting an influence to mold society and to uplift future generations. So, the inheritance of the child, his physical or her physical um, attributes, the weaknesses, the strengths, the tendencies, it all goes back to the parents. They receive it without any choice for themselves. If we love our children, then we will start planning from now when you maybe do not have them and for those who have of course you really have your children but for those who don't have children now you can start planning to give a good inheritance if you are a good man you will leave a good inheritance for your children how by living a life that is holy and pure because your character is recorded in your dna it's in your blood and if you continue to cultivate in yourself dispositions habits characters that are not in harmony with the will of god if we love our children right now we will start making plans for them by planning for ourselves because whatever strengths we have whatever weaknesses we have we are going to commit it to them so in love every parent who plans someday to have children should know that whatever they are is what their children to a greater or less degree as far as their physical attributes and even their tendencies go that is what the child will be and like i said this is even determined by the genes if you want your children to be in good health the issue of genotype will be properly considered there are some people who think that the only thing that they have to consider when giving when getting married is whether they love someone or not and then they take risks into bringing children into the world who never requested to be brought into the world. They are taking risks with another person's life knowing that this child may come with a disease that is a sickle cell. It's important and it shouldn't be looked down on because if you love your children, you would know that I shouldn't take a risk with their lives. Many children are suffering today because of parents who thought they loved themselves and because of that, they decided to, in their blind affection, take a risk in bringing children into the world that would, to a large degree, be not in the best condition. I know that these things are sensitive issues, but I would say that people before getting into relationships should find these things out and not get attached in such a way that they feel they must get married and then they will take a risk into bringing children into the world that will suffer in a way that they wouldn't even want themselves to have suffered. So these things should be considered properly. What again are parents transferring to their children? Reading from Patriarchs and Prophets, page 561, we are told, Both parents transmit their own characteristics, mental and physical, their dispositions and appetites to their children. As the result of parental intemperance, children often lack physical strength and mental and moral power. Liquor drinkers and tobacco users may and do transmit their insatiable craving, their inflamed blood and irritable nerves to their children. The licentious often bequeath their unholy desires and even load some diseases as a legacy to their offspring. And as the children have less power to resist temptation than have the parents, the tendencies for each generation to fall lower and lower. Wow. End of quote. Diseases, also our licentious habits. So if you are someone who sleeps around, maybe glued to pornography, in sexual sin of all kinds, know that it's going to affect your child. If it is liquor drinking, it's going to affect them. And also your good attributes is going to affect them. Not that they must be exactly like that, but it's what we call tendency, inclination. They, at, a, at any small call to those characters, they would respond very well to it. It's going to have a strong drawing to them. They will more likely f go into liquor drinking because their parents were into it. It will be a hard battle, let's put it that way. It will be a hard battle for them to fight than if the parent was not into that vice so whatever vices we as uh, people who intend to be parents have or whatever the parents have that's what the child will have reading again from review and herald july 29 1884 from temperance page 174 paragraph one 
It says, Our ancestors have bequeathed to us customs and appetites which are filling the world with disease. The sins of the parents, true perverted appetites, are with fearful power visited upon the children to the third and fourth generations. The bad eating of many generations, the gluttonous and self-indulgent habits of the people are filling our poor houses, our prisons, and our insane asylums. Intemperance in drinking, in drinking tea and coffee, wine, beer, rum and brandy, and the use of tobacco, opium, and other narcotics has resulted in great mental and physical degeneracy and this degeneracy is constantly increasing. Wherever the habits of the parents are contrary to physical law, the injury done to themselves will be repeated in future generations. The race is groaning under a weight of accumulated woe because of the sins of former generations and yet with scarcely a thought or care, men and women of the present generation indulge in temperance by surfeiting and drunkenness and thereby leave as a legacy for the next generation disease, enfeebled intellects, and polluted morals. End of quote. You see, children are like their parents, mostly also by example, not just by inheritance. All this we've read now is talking about what we can transfer to our children without a choice for themselves. They just get it free of charge. A legacy committed to them, but what legacy is that? So it is important for us to think of our present life. If you say you love your children, is it really love for you to continue in a life of vice when you know that is going to affect your child? You have to struggle to ensure that you do the best for the child. And like we read in the devotion, and we've seen in previous devotions actually, the mother is to do her best to ensure that she takes care of herself before the child is even born. While the child is still in the womb, we are already setting a direction for the child. Firstly, by our own characters, by our own dispositions. Even before the woman is pregnant, the man and the woman, whatever their blood is, it's already going to determine to a very large degree what the child will be. Then secondly, when the woman is now pregnant, whatever she's doing throughout that time of pregnancy is going to affect the child. Then thirdly, when the child is now born, by precept and example, which is what we talk about nature versus nurture, which one determines the child's character very well. Now, let us not despair. It is true that our dispositions affect the child, but this is where the Lord comes into the matter. We are told, train up a child in the way he should grow, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. What does that mean? That means that regardless, to a large degree, although it still has influence, regardless of inheritance, the genes, regardless of that, if the child is brought in the way of the Lord, then the genes may not have the effect that it ought to have. That's the bad ones. Because if you teach the child a good thing, we can change. And there is even the study today of, of uh, the effect of food on genes. If the child is fed aright, gene food does have the ability to alter genes. Wonderful thing we have here. That is why we are told, train up the child in the way they should grow and when they are old, they will not depart from it. The food the child eats actually affects the genes of the child. It can alter it. Even if a child inherited bad genes in the sense of genes that are tending towards licentiousness and all kinds of immorality and liquor drinking and bad habits generally or any sin at all, even if the child has that, if the child is taught the word of God, firstly, not just by words, but firstly by words, instructed. Then secondly, shown the right example from the parents. Children are just like mops. They suck up everything. Whatever they see around them, that is what they do. They see you dress a particular way, they do that. Whatever You see parents, children even walk like their parents. They have the same footsteps, as in like the, the same uh, walking gestures they take the same gestures of their parents because that's what they see very often sometimes it may not be necessarily what they see it's just an inheritance it's just inheritance they, they, they get these things from the parents so it's very important that we understand the effect of nature and nurture in determining the final destiny of a child 
when we should start with the nature by working on ourselves to ensure that this devotion we're having now, like parent, like child, will indeed have its full effect in every ramification. Let us have the right nature and then also right nurture. And I tell you, there will be no way that that child will depart from it like the Bible says. So in case someone is wondering that ah, my child, who knows, I struggled with this and I struggled with that and I'm going to bequeath this to my child and I'm worried the anger problem I have, my child is going to have it. The licentious habits I had, what I'm struggling with, my blood, it's in my genes, it's my vice and my child is going to have it. There is a way out like I have just said but we can start After the child is born, we can start with instruction, that is precepts, and then you need to change your own life because it's not going to have enough force when you are telling the child to do something and then you are showing the child a different example. It's just going to confuse that child. Most likely, it won't work, except the Lord comes in in another way, not through you, to help that child. So let's talk about solutions and how we can use this knowledge of nature and nurture to help the bringing up and the training of a child for the Lord so that they can be... Uh, uh, inheritors of the immortal glory the Lord has prepared for them. Reading from Testimonies, Volume 3, page 567 and 568, we are told, Parents may have transmitted to their children tendencies to appetite and passion, which will make more difficult the work of educating and training these children to be strictly temperate and to have pure and virtuous habits. If the appetite for unhealthy food and for stimulants and narcotics has been transmitted to them as a legacy from their parents. What a fearfully solemn responsibility rests upon the parents to counteract the evil tendencies which they have given to their children. How earnestly and diligently should the parents work to do their duty in faith and hope to their unfortunate offspring. End of quote. So one thing you should understand as, as, as parents is when you see your child struggling, you should understand that many times what they are struggling with is something that we bequeathed to them based on our own weaknesses. Now, how do you deal with the issue? It doesn't mean that, oh, because um, I bequeathed this to them, I will not correct them. But you will correct them, but with that knowledge of in meekness, knowing that you also were like that knowing very well what you struggled with not correcting them in a manner of ah, i never struggled with something like this why are you like this sometimes parents blame their children oh why is my why are you like this i was never like this i didn't do like this when i was younger yeah maybe you didn't do that but you forgot to nurture the child some parents will say ah, i never slept with any man before i got married why is my child doing like this i never had this or that but wh- have you checked the training your parents gave you and ask yourself Is that a training you are giving your child? Some of us, our parents trained us well, but we have become wiser. They they restrained us, they disciplined, they punished, they instructed, they corrected, and they helped us not to be engaged in things that were going to be bad for us. For example, in past generations, for some people, not all, but we'll say maybe 40 years ago, 50 years ago, many parents in some vicinity not in the whole world of course depending on where you grew up they didn't get exposed to the media the way the children are getting exposed to the media today and then it's baffling their parents why their children are not like them you're not nurturing them the way you were nurtured you're exposing them to things that you were not exposed to if you were to be exposed to the same things that your child is exposed to today you may even be worse or just the same like them to a greater to a less degree you'll be like them so it shouldn't surprise you Nurture them in the way of the Lord. Follow the word of God. The Bible says in the book of Psalms 101, principles that you should follow. Set no wicked thing before the eyes of your children. Help them to make friends that are good. Make sure that no one who is a gossip or somebody of a false tongue is a friend to your child. They don't know how to choose for themselves. But then who is their friend? Their friend to violent people like Spider-Man, like Batman and Superman who are just fighting and Marvel and the rest of them and many other things they watch in the cartoons jokers and clowns and then your child is behaving like a clown is unserious and you are worried but you didn't switch off the television to nurture them aright and point them to better characters like you being a better example to them and also using people in the word of God and stories from there to be their examples rather than them having these worldly examples that they find in Nickelodeon and Cartoon Network and in Disneyland 
What examples do they find that will be of help to them? It's not a good help to them, but that's what we're giving to them. So it shouldn't surprise you. We have a great work to do count to counteract what, what we have done to them both in inheritance and nurture. Some parents have nurtured their child or their children wrongly. It's in pity we should look onto these children and do what we can diligently, earnestly, in faith and hope to these our unfortunate offspring to bring them back to God or to train them in the way of the Lord depending on what situation you find yourself. Reading again from Temperance, page 175 and downward we are told, the many, suffer, many suffer in consequence of the transgression of their parents. While they are not responsible for what their parents have done, it is nevertheless their duty to ascertain what are and what are not violations of the laws of health. They should avoid the wrong habits of their parents and by correct living place themselves in better conditions. The necessity for the men of this generation to call to their aid the power of the will, strengthened by the grace of God in order to withstand the temptations of Satan and resist the least indulgence of perverted appetite is far greater than it was several generations ago. But the present generation have less power of self-control than had those who lived then. Those who indulged in these stimulants transmitted their depraved appetites and passions to their children, and greater moral power is now required to resist intemperance in all its forms. The, one, the only perfectly safe course is to stand firm, observing strict temperance in all things and never venturing into the path of danger." End of quote. So we are trying to find solutions for people who, maybe you are a parent who wants to ensure that you solve the problem in your child, or you are already a child and you've seen in yourself that you are like your parents in wrong dispositions. We are told right now that, yeah, maybe we may see that there's something wrong based on inheritance from our parents or by the example we learned from them. It's now our duty to find out what is it that we learned wrongly from our parents, what is the right things we learn, and then drop those ones that are wrong and earnestly use the power of the will to make a change in our choices and be what we ought to be. You see, this is the reason that this job of entering into parenting should be looked at carefully and not entered into carelessly and ent- not entered into mistakenly. There are many children who were actually born mistakenly. Their parents didn't want them. I once heard someone say that there's something about adopted children that is very good, that they can be in a home knowing that they were actually wanted. But children who were born, they don't know whether they were wanted. Many of them, they just came. The parents may not have wanted them. It just happened by mistake. But the adopted ones, they know that they were loved and they were wanted. Parents should make it a duty not to bring in children into the world mistakenly, unwanted pregnancies, even in the marriage. Because the Lord, when he created Adam and Eve, prepared before making them. He had everything ready. So also with us, we are to have things ready. And not let, don't let it just be something that's a mistake. We should be careful about these things. I'm, I'm talking about being in control to ensure that we don't and bring children into the world mistakenly. I, I have heard that this is something really difficult. I understand that. But it doesn't mean that because it's difficult that people should not make effort to at least ensure that they make all preparations and ensure that the child that they are bringing into the world, they were prepared. That it was not just a mistake. And we should understand this because if we are not prepared, you are going to be running Helter Skelter to do the training of the child because you were not ready. That was not what you wanted. And sometimes you don't even have the moral courage to even do the training anymore because you had you were already tired. You never wanted a child in the first place. But if you wanted a child, at least you start studying and finding out, okay, what do I need to do? But this one is going to be so sudden that you now have to start getting preparations ready and all of that. It's always better to be prepared rather than for it to just be a mistake. But there is something that we need to understand before bringing in children into the world. It is not right to bring them in when we are not ready. Reading from the Ministry of Healing, page 380, we are told, parents should understand the principle that under, the principles that underlie the care and training of children. They should be capable 
of rearing them in physical, mental, and moral health. Parents should study the laws of nature. They should become acquainted with the organism of the body, of the human body. They need to understand the functions of the various organs and their relation and dependence. They should study the relation of the mental to the physical powers and the conditions required for the healthy action of each. To assume the responsibilities of parenthood without such preparation is a sin. End of quote. <laughs> Very strong statement there. But why is it considered so? Such a huge word that I say sin to assume the responsibility of parenthood without making not just any kind of preparation but this preparation to know the relation between the mental and the physical body and the organism of the human body getting acquainted with it and capable of rearing the child being capable of rearing the child physically mentally and morally healthy in a healthy format why is this wrong it is because it is going to create great evils reading ministry of healing page 380 it says Far too little thought is given to the causes underlying the mortality, the disease and degeneracy that exist today even in the most civilized and favored lands. The human race is deteriorating. More than one third die in infancy. Of those who reach manhood and womanhood, by far the greater number suffer from disease in some form and but few reach the limits of human life. Most of the evils that are bringing misery and ruin to the race might be prevented, and the power to deal with them rests to a great degree with parents. It is not a mysterious providence that removes the little children. God does not desire their death. He gives them to the parents to be trained for usefulness here and for heaven hereafter. Did fathers and mothers do what they might to give their children a good inheritance, and then by right management, endeavor to remedy any wrong conditions of their birth what a change for the better the world might see end of quote those statistics that was given there of one third that was maybe probably in that time but to, in some particular vicinities you can actually say so and even if it's not the one third that died but a lot of us are going down with diseases today and if we understand okay it is a case of like parents like child parents are bequeathing to the children their own blood which is causing the problem and secondly they are training them in the wrong way giving them the wrong foods that is causing them to get diseases then we need to know that these things need to change they need to change the right training should be given to the children but like we said if the parent themselves are not right themselves there is nothing they can give to that child that is going to be right because you cannot give what you don't have so the the the, the, the responsibility lies on parents because you, you, whatever you are going to give to the child is what you are, what you have, not what you don't have. So the training of the child is actually a training of yourself. Because in training yourself, in training myself, what am I doing? I'm actually training my child because I'm not going to give that child a training different from that which I already have. It's what I am, what I know that I'm going to commit. And that's the same thing to you. What you know is what you're going to commit to the child. And that's why as we are learning like parents but like, like child, we should understand that it's a responsibility given to us to take care of ourselves firstly, teach ourselves the right principles, live the right way, give yourself the right strengths, make sure your weaknesses are overcome and in doing this for yourself, you are making it easier. Not that it's a sure thing that the child will be saved or something, no, but at least you are making the job of parenting easier for yourself and also bequeathing a good inheritance to the child but like we read in devotion especially does the responsibility rest upon the mother she by whose life blood the, the child is nourished and its physical frame built up imparts to it also mental and spiritual influences so the mother is giving the child mental and spiritual influences that tend to the shaping of mind and character it was Hannah, the woman of prayer and self-sacrifice and heavenly inspiration who gave birth to Samuel, the heaven-instructed child, the incorruptible George, the founder of Israel's sacred schools. When you see the way the Bible writes stories of various people, you find out that they usually attach to them whatever achievement they have to their mothers. When you read about the kings, 
they would say Josiah was king and his mother was this. And then you say Ahab was king, his mother was that. Solomon was king, his mother was this or his father was that. Why? Because the God, God wants us to understand that to a very great degree, the parent is the one who molds the character of the child. Either by precept or example or even by just choosing who brings up the child. What did Hannah do? She kept her son Samuel to be brought up by the priest Eli. Who are you dropping your child with? Many people drop their children in schools. But who is in that school? Do you know them? What are they bequeathing to your child? For Hannah, after doing what she could for her child, she gave her child to the priest Eli, who for a very great part of his life, to a very large degree, had a very good character. He was a good man. He did have his defect, but he was a good man and he committed to Samuel good things in his character. There are schools around today, but where are you taking your child to? Is it good people that are in that school? It is still your choice. Even if it is not your example the child is following, at least you selected the movie they watched, the cartoon, you permitted it. Even if you didn't select it, you permitted them to watch it. You, perm- you selected the school. By that choice, you are the parent is still responsible for whatever the child is. So the Lord is calling us today to take these things carefully and put them into cognizance, understanding that there is a heavy responsibility on parents and we should ensure that we train ourselves it's because our children are going to be like us we train ourselves in the right way so that they also will have a chance at least to start up life in the right direction so that the rest of the work will be easier for them there's no guarantee that just because a parent is good the child will also be good but there's every guarantee that the child will have tendencies that are already leaning in the right direction and all the child will need is just some more push and it will be easier for the child to reflect the character of God if the parent was already doing that. So whatever situation we find ourselves, let us take heart and be able to correct wherever, whatever mistakes we have made. Pray to the Lord in faith and hope. Do what you can to bring your child up in the way of the Lord. Let us pray. Dear Father in heaven, as we see this weighty responsibility of parenting, some of us, we have already looked back and we see our children are like us and we were not giving them a right example. We pray, Father. It's a huge thing, but we pray, please forgive us and help us now to diligently do what we can to channel them in the right direction. Some are not even having children yet. I pray, Father, that you would give the grace to people in such situations to do what they can to have the right dispositions, inclinations, weaknesses gone and strengths developed that will make the child to have a good inheritance. Thank you Lord for hearing our prayers and thank you for answering. In Jesus name I've prayed. Amen.